Hello, this is DBB, and today I'm making some matrix-style wallpapers with the GIMP. Um, and I posted this on Reddit, and uh, Chode McJiggletits requested a Crunchbang one. So I'm going to use that for this tutorial. Now I've already got my the template that I posted as our background. It's the bottom layer. And I'm not going to go into depth about how I made this, um, but I used a program called C-Matrix, which is in the Debian repos. And I might make a, a video later showing how I did this, but for now we can just start with this template. Um, and then I search for some logos, and I kind of like this one, so I'm going to use it. Just copy image and now I'm going to make a new layer transparency and paste the image okay now we need to clean it up a little bit but first we want to go to layer anchor layer and now we can use the rectangle tool or hit the R key and we'll just pick out the part we want and it doesn't need to be too exact just uh, make sure that you don't select any of the black, just the white. And this is the part we want, so I'm going to cut this out, make a new layer, transparency, uh, clear the selection with Control Shift A, or you can go to Select, Select None. Okay, now in this third layer here, I'm going to paste, and now you can see our uh, logo is nice and centered. So I'm going to uh, anchor this and then delete the middle layer because we won't need it anymore. And by the way, I'm not a GIMP expert and there's probably better ways of doing this, but this is just how I did it, so that's uh, just a little heads up there. Um, now do we want to clean this up a little bit. We're going to use the fuzzy select tool, or U, or I call it the magic wand. We can use that. Click on the white, hit delete. Click on this middle spot, delete clear our selection and now we've got our logo ready to go and the next step that I do is make this no that's not the next the next step is to select it I uh, forgot that so we go to select by color and just click on the black now I've got our selection we want so I'm going to make this invisible and click on the bottom layer so now that's the one we're working on. And uh, Crunchbang doesn't really use colors in their art, but just for this uh, video, I'm going to use a red logo. Uh, so I'll go to Colors, then Colorize. And I'll just make this a red color. And I want to remember that hue which is five for later. Okay, now we've got our, our color done. And by the way, if you wanted to make this um, logo bigger, what you do is when you're on this layer, just go to layer, scale, and then you could make it, let's say, 200%. Devil it. But it doesn't matter. It's just a, This is just for an example. Um, so now that I've colored the background, we could stop here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you why I'm not going to stop. It looks pretty good, but as you can see, there's a bunch of letters that are sort of half gray, half red. And if you want to make this look like real uh, ASCII art, you want to color those letters in. And the easiest way that I've found to do this is to go to the paintbrush tool. We want to pick our foreground color. Remember that was the hue was five because we want that to match. Okay. Um, and then we go to mode. Normally it'll be up here on normal, but we want to go all the way down and choose color. And just to show you what that does. Whoops. I'm in the wrong layer. 
background. Okay. Um, the color mode, I'll show you here in this area. You can see it just it's turning that light gray into red, which is what we want. Um, and then using this logo as a guide, you can go around and just sort of color in those uh, symbols that are sort of half gray or half red. And I'm not going to go through and do the whole thing, but you can see where this is going. The end result will be it'll look more organic, it'll look more like ASCII art, less like you just colored in the logo on the background, which is exactly what we did, but um, in all the ones I made, I did this. It takes a little bit, maybe 15 minutes to go around and do all of them by hand, but for this video, I don't need to do that. So, now we can get rid of that layer because we don't need it. And by the way, if at any point you want to uh, save your progress, make sure you save it as an XCF and not a ping or a JPEG because you'll lose a bunch of your layer data and stuff. Um, but that's that's the last step to finishing the artwork and then um, if you wanted to change the size to fit your monitor with this particular background any um, any interpolation method you use will look okay just here I'll do an example I'll just make it 2000 pixels wide with a cubic and we'll zoom into 100. You can see it looks a little bit blurrier but it's not terrible and you could fix that a little bit by going to filters, enhance, and sharpen and then here's without the preview on and then you can see it looks a little bit better. It's still um, a little blurry around the edges but it's not awful. So once you've got your your color done and you've got it to the right size, uh, I would recommend just saving it as a ping. It'll be about two megabytes or so, which isn't too bad. Um, you won't be able to put it on Imager though. Imager will automatically convert it to a JPEG to save space. Um, but if you want to save it as a JPEG um, on your computer, you'll lose a little bit of uh, quality, even at 100. It'll be smaller, but I recommend just using a ping. And I think that's about everything. Uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and post a comment or suggestions. Um, if you know how to how to do this better, I'd be happy to hear some suggestions. So. Uh, I think that's everything, so enjoy making your wallpapers.